Good morning. We're trying something new today because I bought a new tripod. <laughs> trying to set it up so that when I buy a microphone, it's gonna, I don't know, we'll see. Trying to do some new stuff. The camera is farther away from me. It is on the table. So when I move, it's probably gonna jiggle. I don't know if I like that. Probably don't. And the light, I'm working with the light. I don't know how I like it, but you guys don't care about that. That's not what we're here for. We're gonna start with the daily reflection on the New Testament. Today is the, it's Wednesday the 15th. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he, God the Father, hath made him Christ to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 and 20, 20 and 21. Jesus Christ came not only to change us, but also to ch exchange with us. Paul explains in 2 Corinthians what someone has wisely called this great exchange. Through the gospel covenant, Jesus offers to take our sin from us and put it upon himself. At the same time, he makes an offer that is almost unfathomable. He offers to input to his to us his righteousness. We might be likened to a bucket of filthy water. When we enter into covenant with Christ, he takes the bucket and empties its foul contents. Then he scours and scrubs the bucket until it shines brightly. When it is, when it is clean, the master fills the newly cleansed container with living water. John said of him that believeth on the Lord Jesus, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Do you feel like a bucket that's been scrubbed and cleaned and filled with living water? I don't know. Do you put back in your own filthy water? I also maybe think the camera angle is a bit too high. We'll see. Okay. Today is James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And in this, um, he's talking about being res a respecter of persons. He's talking about a rich man who has on a gold ring and nice clothes and a poor man who has on vile raiment. And which person do you sit in a place of honor? And which person do you put under your footstool? And if you're a respecter of persons, then... Uh, where does he say that? Uh, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he's just talking about judgment or righteous judge, not necessarily righteous judgment, but he's saying treat everybody the same, love everybody. Um, uh, but the verse I chose for my personal statement is verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that, for he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy and mercy rejoiceth against judgment, saying, if you don't have mercy with your fellow men, then you will not have mercy in your judgment, in the final judgment, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment, which I thought was kind of an interesting phrasing. I liked it. Um, but my statement is, I must exercise mercy if I want mercy. And I need mercy. Um, so that's that. I had it that we had Jeffrey for today. But as I looked at it, it was more for the verses for tomorrow. So we're going to do the verse by verse today. For verses 1 through 9, 
The saints cannot be true disciples of Christ and at the same time display favoritism. We need to examine our lives if we are partial to persons because of the color of their skin, their opportunities for learning, their, the expensiveness of their clothes, their economic standing, or their national heritage, or if we belong to groups promoting exclusiveness. If we desire to live the royal law, we must love our neighbors as ourselves. Elder Marion G. Romney said that caring for the poor is chief among royal laws. For verse 10, Joseph Smith said, Any person who is exalted to the highest mansions has to abide a celestial law, and the whole law too. To be exalted, we must be cleansed from all sin. One sin can damn a person. That's harsh. True, but harsh. Okay. Um, I don't think I have any other thoughts on that. Tell me if the sound was worse because the camera's farther away. But I'm working on getting a mic and I'm working on it. Okay. Today is the 15th. And we've got two prayers, one from BBC and one is a Jewish prayer. No, wait, that's the 16th. Oh, okay. One is from BBC and one is from St. John Damasian. Unto thy tender and searching compassion, O Lord, do we commit all those who have died with little faith and few good deeds, those who were blinded to thy glory by our unfaithfulness, and all who have never known the gospel, grant that these, when they awaken to thy presence and see thee as thou art, may know the greatness of thy mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Christ, a light transcendent shines in thy countenance, and none can tell the sweetness, the beauty of thy glance. In this may the poor servants their joy eternal find, Thou callest them, O rest them, thou lover of mankind. Okay. That is all for today. That was uh, James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And tomorrow we do verses 14 through 26. I don't know how I feel about this setup. I did try the tripod on the ground, it was too low. So maybe I need to build something up. I don't know. But then again, it would be farther away again. I don't know. We're trying out some things, trying to make it better, perfect it before we get to the Book of Mormon. Okay. Love you all. Have a great day. We will talk to you later. Bye.